You're on. We're Good recording. Buddy, we're recording too. Goodness, I didn't do my hair today. <laughs> so, who here has done open houses, either their own listings or somebody else's listings? What's the? I want to get a gauge of the group of who's done an open house. I think just two, Darby and Michelle. That Darby I know of. Michelle. Ed, did you ever, did you do an open yes, house? I've, I've done some. Okay. Oh, okay. That's three. We, anybody else? Okay. Well, open houses are incredibly powerful. And there's this method called the seventh level of open houses. So we're going to touch on that. I want to uh, kind of go over some of my own personal experiences at open houses and my style, my uh, kind of personal, I don't want to say strategy, but my own personal style to how I approach it. Because I know Bruce has a different strategy and um, we can also hear from the three who've had open houses kind of hear about their experiences because they can be surprisingly effective. Open houses can be absolutely effective. And one of the yeah. main things that I, I wanted Jimmy to touch on today, what's why he's going to leave this for us is um, Jimmy and I have two different personalities. You guys have different personalities. And I, I really want you guys to not be stuck in real estate thinking that there's only one way to do things because there are plenty of ways to do things that I know for a fact are very effective. It just doesn't align with my personality or my style which makes it less effective for someone like me. Um, but somebody that's opposite of me, they can have their, their style that works just as effectively as my style. But if we swapped places, we wouldn't be able to run each other's the same way and effectively get the same amount of leads. So we want you guys to hear a lot. That's, what, that's, that's the basis of today for sure, because there's too many ways to run an open house. And everyone kind of reaches out to Harry and I and Jimmy and, and asks kind of, what our method is. And so we want to do this group class so that we guys can hear, you know, three and four different ways that we've seen it ran. Bruce and I also used to office out of an open house a few days a week um, when we had an agreement with a, a smaller builder. And so we got to test out a ton of different ideas, you know, flags, balloons, um, how to approach neighbors and stuff like that. Um, how many of you are committed to doing open houses as part of your business plan for 2021? I know Darby's got a huge goal. Melissa, okay. So does everybody kind of want to do an open house? Um, I am a huge fan of circle prospecting that open house. So even before we talk about the open house, we want to market that open house. And why, why is it important to let the neighborhood know that there's an open house going on? Anybody? Why would well, nobody be, wants to speak up. I hate uh, being the only talkative they, they one. Could, they could be thinking of selling in the near future as well. Yeah, so, so we've got be, neighbors that are interested in what the house is going to go for definitely that is a big one so the conversations around the neighborhood um, can go any which way so my favorite script when i am uh, marketing an open house is choose your new neighbor so i might say <clears throat> hey ed i appreciate you taking the time to chat with me on your front porch I just wanted to let you know, one, two, three mains going up uh, next week, and we're going to have an open house that weekend, um, next weekend. So um, do you know anybody who wants to be, that you would want to be your new neighbor? And it's kind of silly, but at the same time, it gets people's gears turning because you're not asking, hey, do you want to sell your house? You're not soliciting and you're not trying to sell them anything. You're saying, hey, you probably have friends and family that love your neighborhood, that might like to know before this hits the World Wide Web um, that this is for sale. And so it's kind of a value add and also kind of a, uh, a way to create the conversation about them and not necessarily about you. Um, another one 
that I highly recommend uh, a script. And, and this is for like the grumpy neighbors. Um, this is, uh, I like to call it a courtesy call. So I'll never forget, I was still really, really new to cold calling. And this woman on the phone says, what, what, I don't want to talk to you, you know, just super grumpy, super angry. How'd you get my number? How do you know I live in the neighborhood? And I just said, miss, 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 I am so sorry uh, you're having a, a, you know, hard day. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know because there's going to be a ton of cars in the neighborhood that weekend because the way I run open houses is I get tons of traffic. And so I just want to make sure your kids aren't playing in the street or your dogs aren't in the front yard, uh, just so you know why there's going to be extra traffic in the neighborhood. And gosh, her mood switched 180 so fast. So with the friendly folks, you can say, hey, who do you want to be your new neighbor? Who do you know that's looking in this neighborhood? And sometimes the conversation will trend towards, well, have you thought about moving? And We'll get to that later in the in the session and then with the the grouch the grumpy ones i always recommend uh staying from coming from contribution staying in that service mindset and just saying hey i'm looking to help you out um that's why i'm calling you just to let you know it looks like bruce bruce started screen sharing can everyone see that can you zoom in a little bit more bruce yeah, I can. I, um, I just shared that this document with you guys, so you guys will have it. So if you guys go in the chat, you'll see the, uh, the download there. You guys can download it. Um, what Jimmy is, is talking about is what goes into more of the level five, six, and seven area. Um, and so he's right. He's talking about doing some extra things that we don't typically hear about in open houses. So I want to go through the, the seven levels and then let Jimmy tag off of uh, this, this seventh level here because he, he was jumping into calling those neighbors and why that's effective. And, and it's not just calling the neighbors, there's, there's more to it than that. So let's just go through, right? Level one is just placing a sign in the yard. Now this isn't talking about the for sale sign. This is just saying, I'm doing an open house, right next to the for sale sign is an open house sign. Level two is just another, just the same thing, a sign more, more riders, more, more glitz and glam in the front yard. Level three, directional signs at the corners with balloons and riders. So I like to kind of stop here because we, we hear seventh level open house. And a lot of times what we think about is kind of the norm. The norm is level three. A lot of people, this is what you drive by on a day-to-day -day basis. This is kind of what you see a lot of agents doing. Um, and I can tell you that when I stopped being the average agent doing level three open houses and actually went into the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh level, um, the open house has become that much more powerful. This is where like Michelle Kramer was talking about it. You get buy sells because of the amount of uh, signs in the yard, because of the amount of times that you're doing it, because of the circle prospecting thing that Jimmy was talking about. Um, so don't be a level one, two, or three agent. I, I, even, I even have to kind of, in my own head, switch level four and five a little bit. Um, so level four is everything in level three, but they add the flyers um, the week before email invites and posters. I, I know why that's level four because it's, it's, it's more basic. I like to almost swap out level four and five. So you guys see in my cursor here? I would tell you guys at a very minimum, if you guys are doing open houses and you run out of time and you can't get the full effective level six or seven done, at the very minimum, I would absolutely recommend that you do a, a kind of a hybrid between a level four and five. Do all of that, but we're just getting started. You guys don't need to spend hundreds of dollars on flyers. Go invite 100 neighbors minimum around there, along with the day of, uh, of the open house. Put a sign in the yard, balloons writers, flags, you guys, I've seen it all, stars. Um, I well, like flags because I don't got to blow them up. Yeah, same. And helium is a scarce resource. And, and second, um, just to touch on that, Bruce, uh, when I first started talking to the neighbors with Bruce, because first week I'm with this guy, we're out door knocking, we're out circle prospecting. <laughs> first week. No and, rest. No rest. And, and one of the things Bruce, I caught him saying was, 
and correct me if I'm wrong, Bruce, but you'd say, hey, the first 15 to 20 minutes are neighbors only. Yep. And so, I so, thought that was so slick. So when you're, t when you're thinking about, gosh, I have to talk to 100 neighbors, well, just let tell yourself, hey, we're giving them a special invite, you know, 15 minutes before the public gets it. Uh, you know, the neighbors can can come look. And that's a great way to uh, to have that value add and make it seem less daunting to talk to those hundred people for sure. Bingo, bingo. And that's what I'm saying. Do the level four and five. Swap out flyers and all of that with go invite a hundred neighbors in level four. I would tell you that's the base minimum you guys should be looking at doing. Um, and here's, here's it, it, go invite a hundred neighbors minimum. Here's the kind of the rule of thumb. It's 30 up, 30 down, 30 across. So 33, right? But it's, we call it 30, 30, 30. So it's 90 or hundred, just do print out a hundred and pass them out. 30 houses across the street from the house. And if there's corners and all of that, wrap around the neighborhood, that's fine. Um, and then um, 30 up and 30 down. So to the left and to the right of the home. And again, if it curls, cul-de-sacs, T's, N's, you got 100 flies in your hands, do not stop until there's 100 passed out in that neighborhood. It's just the rule of thumb is 100 near the closest ones. Now, um, I'm going to stop my screen share for a second. I'm going to show you guys what we and what Jimmy and I used to pass out while we were door knocking. The reason why we're hitting home on this and, and why I say, look, do not, do not, do not do open houses with just directional signs. You, you're going to continue to waste your time. And you're going to continue to look at me and say, open houses don't work, Bruce. Um, open houses start being effective at level four, five, and six, and seven. Obviously, five and six are probably your primary breadwinners. Level seven is, it's work. But I can assure you, you do a couple level sevens and you have the time to do it. There's no such thing as no leads coming from those. Um, and if there isn't, you're probably not calling the right way, knocking on the door and saying the right things, or having material that people are looking at. And so I'm gonna let Jimmy keep talking about, um, about some different techniques around that while I find what we pass out. So Darby had a question, that's exactly what I'm gonna get into. Um, I'm gonna go find you guys what we used to pass out and to make it cheap, right? Our office, it's five cents a copy for black and white and it's 25 cents a color copy. Uh, most places it's like that uh, when you print. So what Jimmy and I learned, go ahead, Jimmy is to buy a really cheap HP printer <laughs> because that thing will be worth its weight in gold because Bruce and I would go pick up toner and we would have this little HP printer and then we would print out hundreds of these flyers and they would typically have some short CMA and then if we had uh, um, the desire, we you know, if it was... a it, an, an impressive price point, if you will. Um, you know, we'd have like the house, the house specs, the price, and then the CMA, how it stacks up in the neighborhood. Um, and then of course, like our faces and names and numbers. And sometimes we'd have like a little quip um, that would say, you know, do you know what your house is worth or come see us this Saturday or something like that. And Bruce and I would door knock back to back and I've door knocked another um, business opportunities and, and other, uh, there it is, neighborhood open house. 100% free estimated home valuation. Keep going, I've door knocked back to back. So I would, we would door knock back to back and one of the uh, easiest ways to kill your momentum is to, uh, to be that salesperson that stands right at the front of the door. So the screen door can't even open. Um, it's especially as a big guy like me, it's really, it can be intimidating, especially if you're door knocking at certain hours where a lot of times it's like someone who's working from home or a spouse, maybe not the whole family's there. So they're just like, oh goodness, you know, who's this dude standing at my doorway. So typically I would take a few steps back, especially if they had a porch. Sometimes I would leave the porch. I would lean against their house. I would prop a leg up and lean on my knee. And it, you know, as a heavier set guy, I would sometimes garner some sympathy working up a sweat in the summer heat, you know, <laughs> and I would sit there. I'm, I mean, y'all are laughing, but it's the truth. 
And uh, a lot of times the people would come out of their front door and they'd shut the door behind them and they'd say, hey, you know, how can I help you? What's going on? Because I found that when I stood right next to the door, um, people would crack the door, see me and tell me to go away. <laughs> but just that body language of creating that separation draws them in with curiosity. And then when I'm back to back with Bruce or, or Lender, I think somebody just put that um, in the chats, you can, uh, you can gesture to them and just say, hey, him, him and I or her and I are uh, walking through this neighborhood to let you all know about this open house. So, um, and this is the flyer. And typically we would print these on like a matte yellow, like a flat yellow, um, because it would look like a notice. <laughs> and then what I would do if no one was home is I would uh, fold them in half and stick them halfway underneath the mat, um, the welcome mat, um, or halfway in their screen door or something. You can't put it in the mailbox if it's not a properly addressed letter. So, or a properly addressed envelope. So don't get in trouble doing that. Um, however, we do want something that's cheap and eye-catching. Um, and I know Harry calls uh, door knocking door hanging, um, but we're not, you know, this isn't something we hang on the door. This is something we ideally want to hand to them. It's more of a conversation starter. Bingo. That's all it is. Conversation starter and something for somebody that doesn't knock or doesn't answer the door to pick up. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I mean, five cents a copy. Like I said, I brought a, a little HP printer that's black and white and go on Amazon and I can pick up six cartridges that last me about two years uh, for probably like 20 some dollars. The, the, mo the co most expensive cost in all of this for me was the, the yellow paper. The yellow paper is just regular old printer paper. It's just a yellow pastel -y looking color. Um, but it's what, it's what utility companies use for past due notices and stuff. Um, and so you turn it upside down and put it under the doormat or roll it up and put it in the doorknob. Do not, do not, do not ever put anything in mailboxes. Nope. No, that's a big one. Um, so you guys have this. I think I put it in there as a docx file, rip off, duplicate it, um, do whatever you need to. Um, I actually went to a seminar and somebody sent me this uh, from the seminar. So in real estate, we do a lot of R and D rip off and duplicate. If it works for others, it'll work for uh, you. Um, I don't know if it'll be easy to find, but I, I know we would also save money by shrinking the flyer into two half sheets as well. Um, so yep. for, those, for those of us who are really paying attention to costs. So when we're at levels five and six and we are inviting the neighbors, we're getting on the phone, circle prospecting, inviting them, the level seven is hold four other open houses in that area in various price ranges. So I like to take a spin on this one, um, especially in a really competitive market. One thing that Bruce and I had a lot of uh, success with in capturing the buyer would be to schedule showings for similar properties in the area at similar price points for immediately after the open house. Because if, if, uh, if you're tearing down at one o'clock and you can be completely torn down by 1.30 and you meet a super awesome buyer lead that's just like, ah, this house is cool, but it's not really for me. You can just say, hey, there's actually two more for sale in the neighborhood over. Could we uh, meet there or meet here at 1.30 when I'm done packing up and we could meet there together? And so I think it's similar to the hold four other open houses in the area because when you're holding more open houses, you're definitely branding yourself. You're getting to know the neighborhoods. It's kind of like a mini farm. And then I like to take that added value step of saying, hey, it's awesome you're shopping. We did our pre-qualification conversation. Hey, would you like to also go look at a house after the open house? So we're kind of jumping ahead. The level seven is a lot to break down. Um, so I know I'm adding an eighth, I guess, <laughs> level yeah. eight open houses. Um, but but, but Jimmy's right, you can't, yeah, you can't, in this market, in this environment, 
Mark, it's going to be next to impossible. Don't don't try and hold your breath and try and hold four other open houses in the same area, uh, it, unless it's possible. If it's possible, do it. Um, the hardest part is is it's it's it tends to be not possible because houses are going under contract so quick, and the agents that are listing the homes are probably doing their own open houses the first weekend. So don't don't beat your head over the door, but think of those other strategies. You know those other ways. Um, you know, instead of inviting 100 neighbors, go invite 200. Uh, get on the phone that morning and remind everyone. I didn't, I never did that. Uh, personally, I would, I would basically like to door knock Wednesday, Thursday. So there, there's, there's what, what else do we do, Jim Doug, um, with our seventh level open houses? What was the big thing that I always told you was a huge thing? I couldn't believe it wasn't on the seventh level open house. Like oh, we yeah. did this on Wednesdays or Thursdays while be right before we were door knocking, we went to the house and what we put in the yard. We would put those big 12 foot flags. No, nah, that's, that's at the open house. So before oh. the open house, so the week before. A rider? Sort, not a rider. That's, that's close. You're, you're close Darby. What we learned was, so let me back up a little bit. Rider, what Darby's talking about is called a sign rider. Mm -hmm. So have you guys ever drove past a sign and then saw something above the actual for sale sign and then below it? So some people will put a rider on top of their sign that says open house this Saturday from 11 to one. Um, I didn't care for that because what happens is, is that first sign when it goes in the yard, that first sign becomes background noise to the neighborhood. And so what we would do is we'd go to the house on Wednesday or Thursday, right before we would go door knock, we'd put a, we'd put a generic open house sign in the yard. And here's the tip. Home house. You can go to Home Depot. This is exactly what I use. It's still in my garage to this day. You can go to Home Depot and get this thing for about six bucks and see how it's white. While you're at Home Depot, get yourself a roll of white duct tape. And that way, if you ever change your time, you can put duct tape over it and put a new time. So the standing permanent marker that I have on mine is Saturday, SAT, 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., both sides of it. That's like big permanent marker I had. One of my friends, she's like, at, she's like, in that writing calligraphy stuff um she did it really nice for me and it's in permanent marker and so if i ever did a sunday or maybe i did a noon to two on saturday i put two layers of duct tape right over top of her writing and i never had her around all the time so i had to do my own writing but i did my own writing put it on there and then when i'm done with that open house rip off the duct tape and now it's back to 11 to 1 so you can make it fluid but that duct tape white duct tape is what i'm talking about don't use regular you look like a hillbilly use white duct tape and um, you can't, you don't notice it at all. I, when you look at it and you're like, Bruce really just told me to use white duct tape, go put that sign on the yard, stand five feet away from it. You don't even know it's duct tape. It's amazing. Um, but that way you don't have to go out and buy all these new signs and everything and roll a duct tape. Just, I've had the same sign for years. Um, but remember the, the first sign becomes background noise. And so when you put that first sign on the yard, you want to wait a few days before you put this open house sign in the yard. You put the open house sign in the yard and clearly have it designate Saturday, Sunday, whatever that time is. And here's what it does, guys. The, the reason why I don't, I believe that you guys need to put this into your, open, your seventh level open house agenda is because we, we, I'm all about the law of numbers. I say this all the time. If there's a population out there in this world that believes the earth is flat there's a population out there in this world where all methods work and so there's too many people that will go to there's too many people that will go to drive up to a to a yard holy cow look at this that's, that's exactly what i'm talking about right there <laughs> but but here oh okay before i go off before i go off on this tangent never do not be the agent that puts your sign in the yard like that. Do you know why that, that sign's wrong? Because cross traffic isn't faced at the front of your house. Turn it, you got to turn it sideways. So that way as traffic goes by, it sees the sides of the, the sign, not dead on. People don't see those signs. 
I, I always know it's a novice agent when I drive by a for sale font sign like that in the front of the yard. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. For sale signs, put it on, put it, you know, what am I looking for? Put it the opposite of that. Perpendicular. There you go. Um, so the reason why this sign is so effective is because there's a lot of people, there's a lot of population and I, you know, I hate to say it, but my population, we don't like to pick up the phone. We like to do everything online. We also like the damn easy button. And the easy button for us is to go up to a house. We're like, ooh, I like that house. Instead of going online and, and logging into some other agent's you know, advertisement for it and getting captured by that lead, um, all of those things, people will see that and go, oh, well, I don't need to call and do a sign call and set up a showing and go online and look for this property. I'll just come back Saturday, 11 to 1. It's a beautiful sign, but put it in there Wednesday, Thursday, so it's plenty of time for the, the drive-bys to see it, as well as the neighborhood. So we drop, Jimmy and I drop the open house sign in the yard, then we go knock our 30 up, 30 down, 30 across. And if we're not, you guys, if Jimmy and I don't have time to circle prospect, we're probably dropping 200 flyers out there. If we have time to or circle prospect, we're probably only doing 30 up, 30 down, 30 across. But the seventh level works when you do the consistent pieces. It's not the sign in the yard that says Saturday from 11 to one. It's not just the hundred flyers around the neighborhood. It's not just the circle prospect. It's the three touches, knocking on the door, meeting the neighbors. Then they get a recall reminder. Then they drive by that sign. It's constantly in their face. It's branding and nobody, or not, <laughs> People want to work with people that work hard. So this is why you have to do this if you want to pull listings out of open houses. I, we get a lot of buyers out of open houses because we do a lot, but we get a lot of sellers out of open houses because we talk to the neighborhood three times. And then if they come to the open house, even better. Jimmy, I'm taking over. I'm sorry. My question to okay. you is, Jimmy, how many signs and where do I put them? Oh my gosh. Well... I think the appropriate answer is to probably check with your county uh, to see how many signs are allowed. Um, but I would recommend anywhere from eight, if you can, 15, 16. Uh, you know, I think. What I was drive my minimum into, standard for us? Gosh, I mean, I don't think we set out any less than 10. Yeah. No less than 10. And then uh, going, can you go back to the other slide really quick? Yeah, for sure. Another, uh, um, search. Wait, I'm sorry, uh, what was it? Which one? The open, the blank open house one. This so guy? If you, yeah, if you, have, if you take your mouse all the way and you see just the rectangle ones with the arrows, sometimes Bruce and I would bring these and, uh, um, go to the big corner lots, like, you know, it, the, the nice house on the corner lots, maybe where the entrance of the neighborhood is. And then we would knock on the door and say, hey, can we put these in the corner of your yard? <laughs> you know, can we use, and then that, then you're not asking, you know, you can still joke about who they want their new neighbor to be. Um, but you don't, it's not a pressured knock. It's, hey, I'm working for someone else. Can you do this? And um, you guys would be so shocked at the amount of times I've seen people give Bruce listings because of his open house uh, um, expertise. And, and I say expertise, but you know, I almost want to joke that it's just the flags, Bruce. No, I'm kidding. No, um, it's, I don't do anything special. I just put work in. You put work in. And so we've had so many neighbors come up and be like, wow wow, guys, that, I've never seen anyone put up 12-foot flags before. I've never seen this many signs in a neighborhood. And, um, you know, we've had, we've had signs get stolen. We've had signs get damaged. It happens. Um, Were you but, with me when I had that guy throw that, those signs across the street right in front of me? Or is that no, Dente? That was not me. Oh, yeah. So I knocked on this one guy's door. And it, it, like, I, I just, I've learned I just don't care anymore um get mad at me I I really don't care yeah um somebody and I were I think it was Michael Dente we're down in Denver doing an open house and um I always knock on doors especially if I'm if you're sticking something into their ground be careful because there's sprinkler lines 
Um, this time we weren't sticking anything in the ground, but usually if I have an A-frame that folds out and I just set it on the ground, if it touches their grass, it's, it's a reason for me to go knock on their door. I go knock on this guy's door. He doesn't answer. I have two, I got two signs in his yard and uh, we're at the open house and I'm like, man, something's up. There, no one's coming to this open house and we did everything right. This is odd. Like we got a higher price house, but it's in the heart of Denver. Like something's odd. So I go drive and I'm like, somebody, some a, a signs blew down. So be careful. If it's windy, just go check your signs or have, that's another reason why two people is so important. Mm -hmm. um, go check your signs. So I'm like, I, something blew down. We got to go check these signs. And I started thinking, I'm like, wait a sec, where, where signs get bottlenecked and the bottleneck means like you can only have so many signs on one street. And if those signs blow down, uh, it's next to impossible to find the next sign. So I'm like looking for those bottleneck areas. And I'm like, that's that guy's house. So I'm driving up and I just see this guy out in his yard and he just pick, he just chucks it across the street. So I pull up and said, Hey, sir, you know, I, have, I hope you're, you're having a great day. And I apologize. I put my sign in your yard. He just, I mean, he just, just kept cussing. I, I couldn't get a word in edgewise. I just put my signs in the car and I, uh, well, I didn't mm -hmm. put my signs in the car. I picked him up, put him on the other side of the street. And then he starts yelling at me about how he knows that neighbor and how they're not going to appreciate it. And I said, look, sir, if you want to come over and look at my sign, it's on the public sidewalk. The next person that touches this sign and it's not on somebody's private property is the time that I'm going to come back after you took a picture of it with my cell phone and I got on my, my merry way and um, the signs were still there. Um, so public sidewalks, this is why Jimmy brought it up. Check with your county and local municipalities. Um, we found out through these group coaching uh, sessions that in Johnstown Millican, they have uh, a, a very similar stance on signs and open house signs, just like Frederick. Uh, Frederick is gosh awful um to do open houses you have to get a permit with the city um if you don't they can confiscate your sign and i believe the last time i checked it was up to 35 dollars a sign to get your signs out of jail so if you're mm. using 10 plus signs that's 350 bucks mm. um so do some research on the areas i will tell you i don't ever do anything in frederick anymore um i'm probably on their blacklist because i was not I was not happy when the police officer showed up to the open house uh, to give me a warning because he, he was kind of one of those police officers that really made me feel like he already confiscated my signs. Even though he didn't, he just, his demeanor, his words, everything. So I got upset because I'm like, well, why do you have, don't lecture me. I already got to pay you all this money because you're threatening me with it. And then he proceeds to tell me he didn't actually pick up my signs. So be careful. Um, but the number of signs is so important. It tags off of, that sign in the house on Wednesday, door knocking, cold calling. The number, I'm telling you, the more you make a spectacle of this, the better off you will be. Um, because neighbors take notice. If, if one neighbor sold their house with, with average Joe agent down the street and they noticed that their open house, they had maybe three or four signs. Like if people are starting to think about selling their house in a year from now or six months from now or something like that, um, they take notice because real estate is top of mind, right? We always talk about the reticular activating system in the back of our mind. As soon as somebody starts to think about doing something in real estate, they notice it more. Be the person they notice hand over foot over every other agent. Mark my words, if they're that close to giving you, a, uh, to making their house or making their move or wanting to talk to somebody, they'll stop by your open house and you'll get to know them or you'll hit them when you door knock and stuff. And that's when the seventh level of open houses starts to compound on itself, because even though it's not going to be easy to do four open houses in and around one neighborhood with the inventory we have, let's say you are able to, you know, let's, let's use Darby as an example. She's going to do a ton of open houses. So if she's got an open house, maybe she will call the listing agents in or around that area that do have listings and say, Hey, I'd like to hold an open house for you. And then when you go and you talk to those neighbors again, or those neighbors come into that house again, um, like Bruce is saying, that reticular activation uh, system is activated. So they're like, oh, gosh, I know Darby. I've seen her signs all the time. Gosh, she always puts out 10 signs. This is the third open house we've seen. Honey, have, 
we should go talk to Darby and it just be, you know, just becomes this rolling momentum. But um, we're doing really good on time. Bruce, I got to ask you, what yeah. do you do in the open house? We talked about everything around the open house, but what does it look like when we're in there? No, that's a great question. I want to get there. But I also want to show you guys a couple other things just to talk about because this these are questions that we get for sure. So let me show you some of this. All right. So see this guy over here, all these different open house signs. This is probably more like a joke. Um, however, when you guys will see other open house signs, right? Be courteous, don't kick them over, don't put yours right in front of theirs. There's plenty of rooms on these streets and on these sidewalks. And to be honest with you, if you feel like you need to put your sign in front of theirs, it's because you're not using enough signs. If you use more signs, your signs will dominate this cluster. Trust me. And here's what I mean by dominate. So a lot of people think that when I say 10 signs minimum, I mean like 10 corners. And, and it's not that. So I want to show you guys. All right. So here's a house in Longmont. All right, this is my rental property. And if I were to do an open house sign here or an open house here, um, let's count up how many signs I would require me and Jimmy to put out. So the minimum is 10. But what we do is before the open house, we got to look at the map. We got to know the area, scout it out, right? If you're door knocking, scout it out. I know the area very well, obviously. So Pace Street is very major street. Mountain Views kind of uh, it's, it's it's not major major but it's, it's a bigger street and then we got the, the through the through area here so i have two choices i have two choices i like a lot of signs but I, it's a very very much you need to make sure you don't confuse the public i've seen too many people do this they'll direct people down mountain view here and into the subdivision this way but they'll also direct people down trail ridge around monarch and over here to cumberland because I think that it's more signs, the better. Honestly, you just, you're going to confuse the public because they're going to think that there's two open houses. And then when they leave this open house and come back out this way, and then they say, oh, there's another open house. sign. looks like from the same company, it leads them right back to the house they were just at. Just little things like that in life cause people not to call you or work with you if they, if they don't want to, right? So be careful confusing the public. But here's what I would do. So we got Pace Street right here. I'm gonna have six on Pace Street. <laughs> now think of the way traffic flows, okay? So traffic's going to, coming from the top of my screen down, they're gonna be on this left side of the street, which means three arrow signs are gonna be right here. One at the corner, one about 20, 30 yards up, and another 20, 30 yards up. All arrows gonna be pointing this way. Then the other three are gonna be on Pace Street, but on the opposite side of the road because now traffic's flowing this way. So now on this side of the road, one at the corner here, facing arrow going this way, one here, arrow going this way, one here, arrow going this way. So in one intersection, we have six signs. That's why I say a minimum. Signs are expensive. I don't expect you guys to go out and buy 15 of the great signs. Go get, go get it. This is what you can afford. One sign on like build a sign or those A-frames, the metal ones, the ones that will last you a couple of years, they're, they're 50 to $75 a pop. Don't do that right now. You're brand new. You're getting started. Go to Home Depot. Go get those corrugated ones that I was showing you over here, right? You got the, you got the one in the front of the house, and then you got these other signs. That, go on Amazon. You can pick up 10 for 20 bucks usually, or it might be a little bit more than that, but um don't overspend until you have the money coming in, but don't cheap out on these open houses. You got to have 10 plus and you can find really cheap ones. But so in one intersection, I'm going to have those six signs. Now, again, I'm not one. I don't want to go in this way because this is more signs, more blah, blah, blah. I want to go in this way. Then on Mountain View, I'm going to have four. So I got six up here pointing this way. And then on Mountain View, and we're going to be running east and west. So I'm going to have one, two here pointing this way towards the entrance. And then I'm going to have two here pointing this way towards the entrance. So before we even get into the neighborhood, we've got 10 signs up. 
if pace was a little bit more congested with houses and stuff right here, I may decide that we only need uh, two on this uh, or four, two on each side instead of six. I, just, I know the area and I know we can put six, no problem. Like we could put 10 if we wanted to. Um, but make that spectacle. And the reason why you want it 20 to 30 yards away from each other is because if they're all 10 feet away from each other, you have some effect. But as somebody drives by, you're going to get those people that actually aren't on the road to go see open houses. They're going to be like, wow, what the heck is going on over here? We're not ready to see open houses yet, but this one has us intrigued because in a couple of months, we were thinking about getting started. This one has us intrigued. We're only on our way to the grocery store. Let's stop by. So we have 10 open house signs up right now. And then as I get into the neighborhood, I don't do as many because you're, you're, you're on people's yards and you don't have time to go knock on doors and ask all those questions. Sidewalks are limited, stuff like that. So I would probably push people this way and use one or two right here and then come down here, use one or two, and then right in the driveway, see if I can pull it up, right in the driveway, no. Jimmy, Jimmy's gonna love, this car sit, has sat there for four years since I've owned this, this, this house, Brutal. It's, and, and, the, and the landscaping looks nothing like this anymore, so I know that this photo is even older than four years, oh my gosh, anyways, so this is the house, so what I would do in front of the house is I would put I'd probably put one right here pointing towards the house, two, three, four, and five if I had enough signs. I'm talking spectacle. And that's just the A-frame open house signs pointing to it. There's a for sale sign in the yard. There's another sign right here that's going into it. And I mean, I'd have five right here because everybody on the block that you just knocked 30 up, 30 down, and 30 across they all know about it. They picked up the flyer. Then the day of the open house, they can't miss it by looking out their window and having some coffee or whatever they're doing, right? And then what we do, and this is, again, build your, build, your, build your inventory. Don't spend the money right now. But as you get money, do yourself a favor and grab some teardrop signs. First, I have a question. Um, if we're doing open houses for other people, so um, like Darby and Michelle, they did, I think, some for Jenny. Can we put out our signs with like our names and stuff on them? Or do we have to have generic ones if they aren't our listings? What do you think the answer is, group? What would you do if you couldn't get a hold of me and Harry and you guys were just doing it? So, so first off, I, if it's somebody else's listing, on any material that I print out, I always put open house hosted by Darby, listed by Jenny Hart. I always put her name. My name might be a little bit bigger than her name, but her name's on there, on the flyers. My open house signs are my open house signs. Hey, Jimmy. Hey. hey man i saw you got that house listed on one two three main street man um you uh you think i could do an open house on that sometime or are you going to be doing one sure man yeah i'm going snowboarding this weekend um i'll just have to clear with my sellers but uh yeah they should be fine with it cool let me know if 11 to 1 works for them and um you, you don't mind if i use my own marketing material do you ah no man no get those cool. leads awesome man let me know if they confirm have a nice day cool yeah sell it for me Cool. Keep it simple, Melissa. When you're, you're the question you have, just ask the listing agent. It's all by permission with the seller. Just, just ask the listing agent. Yeah, cool. If I use my marketing material. Yeah. Okay. And if they say no, like when it co-branded, then co-branded. If they say, yeah, you know, I got some flyers there. Cool. You mind if I use my signs? Good. Okay. Yep. I've used. I've done open houses where I felt like I needed twenty signs, and I had three different types of signs. Hodgepodge. Um, it, it's, it's, you guys got to get those arrows out there. I'm, I'm trying to find some in, in here that are awful. Be careful with what you order. Do you, be, yeah, just be careful. Um, th this, I, I, there, I, there's a reason why I can't stand this sign and it, it doesn't make sense when you guys see it online. That's what I want to say by being careful. Open house directional signs. They don't need all this crap on them. It makes that arrow so small and from a distance, 
it just looks like a block. It doesn't even, you don't even notice it's an arrow for a while. Do as big of an arrow as you can. I, I like these because they're actually an arrow form, which makes you allowed, which makes it easier to, to put your stuff on it. But the bigger your arrow can be, the better. It, the last thing people really need to do is, is you. I personally like the ones where people have their, their face on it. Because if you have your face on open house signs, as well as your sign in the yard, it, it, it starts to brand them with you. And it makes it more inviting when, when you walk in that door and they see that face that was on that sign. Um, but again, it, it costs money to do that. So just the rule of thumb is if you're going to spend money on it, make sure your arrow is huge. It, it's, it's powerful. It's, it's much better. Like, like this. Look at how small this thing is. Cool. What do you want me to go back to? To your jobs. Teardrop. Oh, I was on. Sorry. Teardrops. These are called teardrop signs. Um, they're super easy to pack up, put in your car, um, take maybe two to three minutes to set up, but you can get them in eight foot, 10 foot, 12 footers. Um, I've tried all sizes. I'll tell you that eight and 10 are probably the best. I, I mean, I like the big 12 footers, but it's, it's, it's kind of difficult to keep them in the ground. If there's even a remote amount of wind, as you can see this guy, right? Um, so see how it says seven foot, but it's that much taller than him. It's the flag that's seven foot, but be careful with these big guys because it's hard to anchor into the ground. Next thing you know, you're trying to show, you're trying to dig up the yard just to pound it in. Um, these ones are just as effective. Ours had a, a water bag. We just, it, a ring. And yep. just sat on it. So yeah, I've used sandbags, water bags, and I've still, with the 12 footers, it's it just like that little bit of extra wind, it, it can still blow those suckers over unless you're using like 50 pound sandbags. Um, and, and, and honestly, the more and more that I started to buy them over the years, I realized they finally understood to, they could make them just as durable with a much lighter weight material. The poles that I used to use were like full on metal. Now they're very like aluminum, you know, light. The flags aren't so canvasy thick anymore. They're almost like opaque and they see through on both sides and the breeze blows through them really well. So by the time you guys order them, I'm sure they'll be a lot better than what I had to deal with. Um, but let's get, let's get into what Jimmy was talking about. Any questions on signs, how to, the prep before? Cool. Now you guys understand... I hate to steal Jimmy's thunder here, but I got to make some points. Um, we just talked for 52 minutes about how and what before the open house setup. That's what I really like. Everything with lead generation is that same way. It's the law of the numbers. It's the law of coincidentals. Open houses, the two hours that you're there, it's, it's, not, that's, it's not really the effective part of the open house. Less than 1% of the time will you sell that house to somebody walking in the front in the door unrepresented. You'll sell it to people that are represented. But see, if you just do an open house and just put it online, let's just say you put a couple directional signs up and then just get there and just advertise it online through the MLS, you're just going to get a flood of people who don't have their agents with them because their agents were busy or something. And then you're just going to constantly ask, hey, do you have an agent? And they're going to say, yeah, do you have an agent? Yeah. The reason why we spent so much time on that, you guys, is because it's all about the prep and the activities before the open house. I've done all of that work and then had somebody else set up the open house. Mm -hmm. Right? It, you're going to get those calls and you're going to get that. So the last 10 minutes we're going to take is how do we run some open houses? So I'm going to make this quick because there's, there's different methods. Everybody thinks there's this magical script. Everybody thinks there's this magical flow. There's not a magical script or flow. Just be genuine with people, talk to people. The lead generation piece happened before the open house, door knocking, calling, flyers, advertisements online, signs, all of that. So the way that I like to run is I take the less aggressive approach. So my people will come in the front door. I'll say, hey, welcome to the open house. Hey, I know you're not here to talk to me and I'm not one of those agents. So go ahead and look at the house. But here's what I ask you to do. I ask you, cause I'm really looking to sell this house. Come back to me after you're done looking at the house. 
and give me some feedback on what you what you like and dislike and what's going to cause you not to but purchase the home. And then when I get them back there, I have a sign in sheet. But I do not I don't typically have people sign in. I have a sign in sheet because when I start to build a good rapport with people and I start to ask them questions, then I've got the pen in my hand. So that way, when the opportunity comes, I can say, oh, great. You know what? Let me send you that information. What's a good email address for you? People will make up email addresses and, and numbers when they have the pen in their hand is what I've found. That's my method. So they come back to me. They tell me what's good and what's bad about it. And like Jimmy said, if you guys have time, set up some showings for some surrounding open houses. And then I say, great. Well, it sounds like you're not going to be purchasing this home. It also sounds like you're not working with another agent. There's some other agents out there. I don't know why they're not doing open houses today. But I actually set up a few showings just for people like you that might want to go see some things that, that you know, the other agent wasn't willing to do an open house for, right? I just, I beat down, I beat down all of you other agents, right? Um, whether or not you, you know, you might be doing one tomorrow or something, but I just say, look, I got a showing scheduled. Do you guys want to go out and take a look at this house? Uh, it's very similar to this one, but I don't know if it has the things you want. And then you start to build rapport and you're like, wow, this person really goes. So that's a way to capture some buyer leads. Obviously, people in the neighborhood, you're going to pick up on it because as soon as they come back to you after they walk around the home, I say, hey, great. Two things bring people to open houses. You're either looking to buy a home or you live in the neighborhood. Who are you? And people will go, actually, yeah, I live in the neighborhood or no, I don't live in the neighborhood. I'm just not looking at home. Um, you, and then you ask, oh, you're looking at homes. Great. Yeah. You know, I got to be up front, man. I don't want to step on toes. Do you have a, do you have an agent that you're working with? If they say, yeah, don't take yeah for an answer. Oh, great. I know a lot of mate agents around town. What's your, who's your agent? I'll say What's thanks where thanks is due. Yeah. What's I look for a name. name. Yeah. It's too easy for people to say, yeah, I got an agent, right? Do you have an agent? Oh yeah. Fantastic. Hey, I know tons of agents around town. I like to give thanks where thanks is due. Who's your agent? Uh, uh, Hey, it's okay. You don't need to lie to me. I know I'm a stranger and I know that you just want to get out of here. I appreciate you guys taking the time. When are you guys looking to buy a home? Cause it sounds like you're not working with an agent and you don't want to talk to me about it. So it sounds like you guys might be six, six to 12 months away from buying a home. And then you get, well, yeah, actually we kind of are, you know, we didn't want to make you think that we were, we were wanting to buy the house. We just so happened to be driving by. So all the sign, I hear it all attack their bull crap. You guys. I don't see it. I don't see enough agents in open houses attacking that, that crap that people spew on us. Because the reality is if you don't attack it, guess what you're going to do? Oh, okay. You have an agent. Well, Hey, I hope you have a great day. You, you, you lost every opportunity at that point and they're done looking at the house. So you can't ask too many questions. And, and even if you piss them off, they're leaving anyways. See ya. Bye-bye. Don't be timid. That's why I, I'm a timid guy. I sh I'm shy. I don't attack people when they first walk in because I, I know all of those other lines for the other part. Now, let's talk about when people attack when they jump in. Jimmy's an attacker, right? Jimmy likes to build rapport from the rip, and Jimmy's very good at it. I am horrible at building rapport. I'm a, I am such a type A. I want to get out and in on the point. I don't want to build fluff. I just want them to see the house and tell me what it's like. Oh, what do you do, where, Jim? That's where our styles are so different, Bruce, but yet not that different because we do a lot of the same things, but we approach them in different ways. I, I will take the fake emails and the fake numbers. Um, and what I'll do is I'll hand them the pen. I won't ask them to sign in or anything. I will just have a sign that says um, sign in for seller. And then I'll have the sign in sheet and I'll just hand them the pen and then I'll just strike up a conversation. You know, Hey, how's the day treating you? Um, are you guys, uh, you guys uh, in for, you know, in for brunch? You know, just like something so random. Wow. I really, like, I love fashion. Um, and so a lot of times I'll be like, wow, you know, and I'll comment something on their, on their person and it just kind of takes them back. And then when you hand them the pen, uh, then I'll pick up the open house sheet and I'll be like, Bob.Smith at Gmail. Is that spelled correctly? And a lot of times if it's a fake email, you know, their face just, ooh, you know, 
And it's just like, oh, little puppy, you know, 42. You know, and they're just like, oh, that's my daughter's email. It's my throwaway account, you know, or something like that. So I, I like to catch people's BS a little bit more subtly. And Bruce is right. I don't always let them just walk around the house and bring me feedback. I'll try and strike up that conversation. And then when they come back in the house, whereas Bruce has kind of set the precedent, I'm going to ask you for feedback. I'll still ask for feedback, but it'll be kind of later. Um, but the, the, the big thing is following up from the fortunes in the follow. It always is. When you do, let's say you have a really good open house and you get easy number 10 emails, take time that next day to email them comparables or take notes on what their situation is. Oh, they're a neighbor who just remodeled their house. They wanted to see how the Smiths decorated, write that down, follow up in an email, send them a thank you card. Um, and, and, but I will do the same thing as Bruce and ask what their agent's name is. And I, one of, one of my favorite things is be like, oh man, I hope my clients never forget my name. Here's my card. I'm Jimmy. And then they're super embarrassed because they lied to you or they genuinely forgot. And when, when I, uh, when I make that joke, sometimes I'll be a little bit more forward and be like, wow, like the, the service I provide is definitely more memorable than theirs. Huh? And then just like, just little, you know, not too confident, not too self-deprecating, but somewhere in between of just being, being human and kind of making fun of all of the rigmarole of, of, of all of this, you know, we're just humans. Moving is really stressful. And when you can cut the BS with somebody, um, they'll remember you. With COVID, are they required to sign in? I, Brady, I tell everybody is required to sign in every time. I say my sellers require it. So I don't, uh, that's maybe Bruce, we could look that up on. Uh, in yeah, our no, that's a, that's a great, that's a great, that's a great question. I, and I apologize. I was telling you guys exactly what I do before COVID. I haven't done one since I went to full board coach. Um, great question. I'm, I'm so glad we caught, uh, caught this at the end here. Um, yes, yes, you guys do need to have records. So just like um, when we go out and show buyers homes, we need to be doing a COVID buyer log. Um, you need to do a COVID open house log. And that's, that's what you do. It's the same thing at restaurants, but it's not, do not make it optional. Um, do not make it optional. It's, it's just simply a log. Um, let me show you guys all you, all I would do for you guys, all I would tell you guys to do. Let me look it up here. Uh, COVID buyer log. I've heard some agents even double checking names with IDs. <laughs> yeah, I, this is, this is, I've been told that this is up to you, but you do need to have like first state, if anything happens, you better have a log. Um, oops, I forgot to share my screen. Sorry. So I would create something like, look how easy this is. Create something else that says open house, open house COVID log. Uh, this is for this is for monitoring and tracking and purposes only in case any issues arise with COVID. Blah 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 blah. Uh, but you guys showing buyers, this is your buyer log. You should be using. But look how easy this is. Date, time, address of property. How I would change this for open house? I would change it to date, name, or date, time, name. We already know the property. Just put the open house COVID log property address up here, date, time, name, contact info, um, and then have them sign that. During COVID, you can only have one party in the home at a time. That is pretty well blanketed through all of the uh, through all of the counties that I've that I've read up on. One one party in at a time, or one household in at a time, um, and then go in, wipe down, and then let the next household in. It's cold outside, guys. So again, having two people, uh, you're less likely to have, the, you know, you're less likely to be inside with another group and have somebody else kind of going, can we just stand at the front door? It's cold outside. If you have another agent out there, they're not going to, they're not going to be pansies about it. And you're, the other agent standing out in the cold too. <laughs> Take turns, rotate. Everybody goes in and gets warm, but do open houses in the winter. They're awesome. Um, not a lot of agents are doing them right now and there are buyers out there and they want to see open houses and open houses are few and far in between. Um, what was I looking up? Oh yeah. 
Fire Code Love. Yeah, I'll download it for you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Great question. What else can we sum up before we end this? Uh, uh, can you hear me? I can. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, can I say a few things? No. Um, when you're doing your flyers, partner with a lender. They'll print them for you. Yeah. Yeah. Vendors, partners. Um, yeah. I've done it a couple of times. Um, yeah. If you don't, if you don't have another agent that will go with you or that's available, a lot of times lenders will, and they're nice to have on hand. Um, and know, know the, do your research and do learn the market of that neighborhood, because if people are, have been looking in that neighborhood, they're going to know everything about that neighborhood and you, you need to be the expert mm -hmm. too. That's um, a good point. We never talked about what's at the open house. What do you have at your open house, Michelle? Um, I mean, I have my computer. I, I never print off um, flyers on the property because I want to have that connection with them. And, you know, oh, I'll send this to you. Um, so, I, oh, I, I just, I'm so, I don't want to interrupt, but I, um, I like that. That's a good point. You guys having all the information on the flyer about what else is around the, the neighborhood to hand to them. It's a lot. I like to see where people have one copy or like you said, your computer to look it up. Then you just say, Oh no, I'm sorry. This is just my master thing. So I can send you, I can text you the address if you want. What's a good phone number for you. Mm -hmm. It's another easy way to pick up. Just it's your master copy. Um, some people will have a binder. So before they leave the office, they'll three hole punch it. And then when they open it, they see that there's no flyers and it's not just something you can hand to them. It's your binder. Um, and then it kind of protects it while you're in the car and all of that stuff too. So good point. Go ahead. Um, and, you know, just, just researching, like I said, the neighborhood and then um, texting them the app, texting them your app when you're there to confirm that you have their right phone number. That's and another, then, that's another great one for COVID that if you guys are there and say, Hey, look, due to COVID, I don't have any flyers for you guys. But we do have an app and you guys can pull up the address. So that way, when you're walking around the home, you can see all of the, uh, you can see all of the different, um, the features and specs around it. Or you can just give me a call. You can just ask me, would you like me to send that, that, that link to you? Another way to get a con piece of contact info without asking for a phone number just to follow up with them. Right. Um, and then I haven't done this yet. It's something I want to do is when you do leave the house, sending them a quick, hey, thanks for stopping by video via text to the open house. And um, when, they're, when they come into the property, I always ask them if they're hunting or just looking. And then if they have their team together of you know their agent, their lender, um, that kind of stuff, so. Awesome, no, great tidbits. I'm going to make sure you're on it when we do the full bone version of open house training. Cool. Yeah. So we're going to, we got this room recorded. Anything else before we end this thing? Um, 